Ah, oh, yes, the men in blazers who promised to appear on this show uh, with a tweet yesterday uh, yeah. oh, with a photograph oh, yeah. attached of me f on SportsCenter, I think back in uh, 1999, when I was hoping to be the uh, the host of the two-minute drill. Well, this is on, when I... On Rich, ESPN at the time, Michael Davies. That Good is when you. I first met you. That's true. And you always picture people the way they look when you first meet them. And so that's how well, I, I see I, you I, I won't, every I won't, single day. I won't be clear. We asked your people for an up-to-date headshot. That's what they sent us. <laughs> Not Rich. So I think we put, can, we, can we pop it back on? Because yeah. you look younger now to me than you do there. Is that right? We say on our show that boldness is truth, Rich Eisen. Boldness yeah. is truth. And I want to say, we also say something else on our show that yes. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say on your show. Roger Bennett, you may say whatever you wish here. Uh, yeah. You are a bilf. <laughs> you are a bilf, Rich a Eisen. bilf, I, I'm trying to figure out. Yeah. Uh, I think I, I understand what I you are you saying. You are, you're fantastic. You, you are a role model for today's bald American. That's all I will tell you. I really yeah. appreciate that, Roger. Yeah. And there's a clapping from another fine bald another over there. Another fellow bald. We all follow your lead. No, bald yeah. nation, rise up. Follow Rich so, Eisen wherever he tells you to go. Brotherhood. So I guess this would be a great way to start. Uh, Roger Bennett, Michael Davies, the men in blazers, yeah. in their blazers, here uh -huh. in person, yeah. uh, along with the men in blazers present in cycle. Encyclopedia Blazer Tanica, yeah. a suboptimal guide to soccer, America's yeah. sport for the future since 1972. It's sport of the future since 1972. Where, now, where does 72, where, where does that just come in? Up, just just, we, just we, we, One of the first podcasts we ever did, we, we were both joined by a love for two things. We love America. There's not a day I do not wake up and thank God that I live in this country. In fact, this time, next week, mm -hmm. this very time, I'm going to be sworn in as an American citizen, which may be... The, the singular great achievement of my life. And the other thing I love, obviously, soccer, football. And yeah. when we both came here in the early 90s, football was always the sport of the future, sport of the 80s. Right. Sport of the, it was always like a Rubik's Cube, a yes. pogo stick, yeah. a fad. But while we've been here, we have witnessed, um, uh, rather than an overnight success, a slow and steady climb driven by a variety of different factors, the rise of the internet, which allows you to connect to United, Chelsea, City, as closely as if you live in the same zip code. EA Sports, FIFA, just the NBC's job of broadcasting the Premier League, World Cups, all those things. Football has slowly become an incredibly American sport without anyone noticing. And it's one of the stories which we we try and mark down in this sport. And yet, the greatest thing is, it's still the sport of the future because every day somebody else will come up to me and say, when do you think soccer's going to make it in this country? <laughs> it's always, it's always, it's always down the road. Well, I, I've lost track of the number of, um, of times that Team USA has scored a big goal and <sighs> that was the moment that Landon Donovan planted a flag. Yeah. yeah, for the sport here yeah. in this country, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, or just fill in the like it, a Mad Lib, you can it, change it, the proper name. In 1950, name. England, the great England team, lost to the USA, who played a minor league washed-up baseball player in goal. They had a Haitian dry cleaner at striker. Yeah, the US won one nil. The manager of the team was the first person to utter the doom phrase: "This is all we need to make the sport go in America." <laughs> no one cared. The USA didn't qualify for another 40 years. But you do, you have Landon Donovan at the last World Cup, you had John Brooks scoring it into Ghanaians in the last second, falling to his knees and crying. Incredible memories. You will not have these at the next World Cup 2018. Breaking news, the US did not qualify. Yeah, I was about yeah. to say that well, it, it, it... You'll it, still have an amazing World Cup and Americans will love it. Is that right? Yeah, because you love a circus. You love an excuse to daytime drink. Daytime drinking. You love an excuse to <laughs> daytime cut drinking. Work. Really, you that's it. Daytime drinking. Look at all drinking. your cameramen daytime are nodding. Drinking. They're like, yeah, we're yeah, cutting oh, work. Yeah, we like daytime drinking. We're up <laughs> yeah. for that. Yeah. They're saying. Daytime um, drinking. Yeah, I yeah. don't know who's going to be filming your show for 31 days while the World Cup's on, because these uh, they, uh, they're all going to be watching, and Americans yeah. will follow that narrative, um, which we try and mark out in this book, mm -hmm. even without an American kicking a football in it. Yeah. So why hasn't this sport taken... <laughs> Well, look, Americans like sports that they can win. Americans are winners. Yes. I mean, it's amazing when you come and you watch the Olympics. Yes. I mean, it's annoying watching the Olympics if you're if you're a non-American when you're outside the country. When you come to America and yes. it's just literally a parade of Americans winning things, you understand that they're playing to the audience because Americans like winning and winning and winning. The problem is, even if you're the greatest soccer nation in the world, you you lose quite a lot. Like, soccer is about loss. It's as much about loss as it is about winning. I'm not sure that American sports fans, the sort of the, 
the sort of when, average when, American when, sports when, fan is really down dreams, with that amount of losing. Dreams, uh, the, the dream team, the first time I saw them and watched Charles Barkley elbow a hapless Angolan in the head <laughs> as, he, as he dunked on them and the American yeah. won by 56 points. I was with Americans watching that game and they were just, woo! Number one, the, the, the miracle, like, you like to win dominant. I was like, why would you do that to that poor Angolan? They were like, shut up, it's the way. You also love the miracle on ice, you know, the winning underdog. Those are yes, the two things. What yes. you don't like is an America that sometimes wins, sometimes doesn't. Italy are not in this World Cup. Chile are not in this World Cup. The Netherlands, the Greek Dutch are not. There will be My people. There'll be 50% unbelievable neck tattoo, 50% less unbelievable neck tattoos because Chile are not at this <laughs> yeah. World Cup. But those nations will be fine. They'll still embrace the telenovela kind of narrative that is the World Cup. And I'll tell you, the big shock of this World Cup yes. is that America will too, even without an American kicking a football with joy or in anger. Mm. See, the thing is, Rich, yes, Michael the Davis. World Cup is not really about soccer. What is it about? It's about the narrative, the continuing narrative of these players who are like soap opera figures in our lives. It's taking place in Russia. I mean, what a setting for, for like season 15 of the World Cup. It's a, it's a great setting. It's sort of like Survivor, where they come up with a new plot twist. <laughs> this year, put it in Russia, like have all of that political and sort of geopolitical intrigue. It's going to be about crowd violence. It's going to be about Cossacks on horseback with whips. controlling with whips, what controlling the wrong? violence. What could possibly oh. go wrong? It's going to be these great players, neck tattoos, simulation. All the things that Americans hate about the sport are actually the things that when you view it as not a sport, but a spectacle to watch while you're daytime drinking. It just is what makes it excellent it's, and so much fun. It's going to be about Ronaldo and Messi, the two guys battling for goat status. One yeah. of them, a preening show pony who like almost doesn't <laughs> like football, but he loves, loves, loves so much taking his top off. He loves whipping looking. his shirt off. He couldn't care less about the football. Well, hang on, yeah. if I score a goal, I get to get my nipples out. Oh, yeah. man. Well, I'm going to so play, play better what? than almost anybody he in the world. He does it again and again and again. He's done it for <laughs> decade, over yeah. a decade, just like superlative football, Drac on noir wafting off him as he just lifts <laughs> off that. Eight no, hold on a second. Hold on a second. I've got Roger Bennett, Michael Davies, Men in Blazers here. Yeah. Have we confirmed yeah. that Ronaldo yeah. does, in fact, use Drac noir? Is that a fact? Uh, you know, I is, can, that a, I, is, I, that in, I, is that in the encyclopedia yeah, it is, it is. Blazer Tanaka? Funny enough, I tell a story under about... Noir, comma, to, Dracar? Or is get, it, where where is that it, in the... It, we, we argued with our editor. It's under Noir slash comma Dracar. <laughs> in, 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 in 2012, I was in Donetsk. Um, which is a beautiful city. If you ever have the chance to go to Ukraine, my people were chased out of it four generations ago. <laughs> I got to go back as a football By coach. On that. On is that why you, still there. Yeah. Still is that there. you bit down on the mate, word? Mate, is there's, a cost, there's a Cossack behind every door in my life. To this yeah. day, I'm full of fear of them. But they sent me to, 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 to uh, Donetsch. And yeah. I checked into a hotel just after Portugal had been knocked out the World Cup. And lo and behold, I was in Ronaldo's room. Uh -huh. And I, I write in the book how... Like months later, my luggage still stank of Dracon Noir just by osmosis for having checked into the same, uh, the same rather beautiful rumors. So I can, by experience, still some days when the wind hits me in the right direction, <laughs> uh, a surplus Dracon. I remember once one of the first basketball games I ever watched was um, was watching. Who was the guy who used to do the um, NBA? Uh, Rash, uh, the, the 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 amazing guy who was married. Ahmad Rashad. To, yeah, Ahmad Rashad. Yes. Was sitting by. Um, I've learned to speak Roger. Yeah, I, translate. I translate. I translate for him. Um, yeah. Because uh, each other. I, was being interviewed, and the interview just stopped in the middle and goes, "Oh my God, uh, Ahmad, you are wearing enough uh, aftershave for the both of us." That's how it is when you share, when you mm. sleep in Ronaldo's bedroom. So we're breaking we're breaking news well, to the, the only, Eisen show fan base. The only equivalent for me is when I. I covered the Hall of Fame for the NFL Network, and we were using, across the street from the steps of Canton, Ohio, we were using the Fox Sports Hollywood Hotel, which was this, uh, which was this, uh, this box that was hermetically sealed that they used for NASCAR, so you could not hear the roar of the engines. You uh -huh. would be able to speak. Smart. Yes, so we were using that because uh, right across the street from the Hall of Fame is I-77 in yeah. Ohio, so that we wanted to drown out the noise there. And inside the Hollywood Hotel was Chris Myers of Fox Sports, his big, tall Paul Mitchell can of hairspray. Uh -huh. That's the only equivalent I have right yeah. there in my career. I, I, so I don't know where, where this Michael, I guess you're the arbiter here. Which, which one's a better brush with fame? Well, I mean, with earlier you. you asked Rog for what the fact was. I mean, I, the connection of Rog and facts is like, it's pretty, it, it's pretty loose. Of course, it's all true. Of course, Cristiano does not wear Dracar Noir. He wears Cristiano. 
uh, which it, it may be, it may smell a lot like Dracar Noir. Uh, it may be oh. modelled after Dracar Noir, but it is not actual <laughs> Dracar Noir. I want to take a 60-second break. We're back with more with Roger Bennett and Michael Davies. I want to talk about your tour. You're going around the country. Oh. You're here in Los Angeles oh. uh, performing here. with very. I want to find out what the... Uh, are we seeing the performance essentially right now? Gotta, we better up our game. I better up our game. We're, we're, better be we're playing at the Ace Hotel tomorrow. There's a Crackle night. partnership yeah. with Embassy Row that I want oh. to hit as well. Oh, oh you know, Sony I'm, Crackle. I want to make sure. I yeah, want to make sure everybody's you. happy. Hit everything. I'm going to hit. I, that's what I do. I touch yeah. all the bases, Look at that. Michael Got Davies. More clips. Okay, we're back in 60 seconds with the Men in Blazers, Roger Bennett and Michael Davies. All right, lots to get to uh, in this uh, segment with Roger Bennett, Michael Davies, the Men in Blazers. You can catch their show when it comes back from hiatus uh, on NBCSN. Of course, the book that's uh, in Roger Bennett's hand right now, the Encyclopedia Blazer Tanica, is available. Uh, what are all bookstores? Uh, all Some. books are bought. Yeah. Uh, but before we get into the other business ones. here, uh, yeah. we, we like to be fact based here on the Rich Eisen Show. <laughs> yeah. Okay, True. we like to be no. fact based. Okay, we're off. Let's do Chris, it. No, Chris Brockman, you have the actual no, the actual issue with uh, details on, on Ronaldo's scent. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the, the official title is CR7. Yeah. Yeah. And you can get a two-piece gift set mm -hmm. that includes, uh, you know, the cologne spray, 1.7 ounces of spray. Yeah. And then a five-ounce shower gel. That's mm -hmm. very good. Now, here's the description uh, on, on these products here. Please. A Dracar Noir ripoff? Is that what it says? Uh, not quite. Sporty, energetic, and modern. CR7 is a fragrance for the spontaneous on the go young man. <laughs> yeah. An intoxicating blend of classic fougre notes and addictive woods and spices. My God, you made me want to drink it. CR7. Classic, classic what notes? Uh, F O U G E R E. Oh, oh my God. I don't know. How do you say that? CR7 is a contemporary <laughs> cocktail of bold, that daring scents, reflective of Ronaldo's strong, vibrant character. Oh. oh. You may want to dim the lights. I'm feeling quite aroused. <laughs> or that, is that or is that what they come out and spray on somebody who goes down because mm. he's been touched <laughs> by a cuticle and then they spray it and then all of a sudden he comes back from off the stretcher and runs like a gazelle. It's and a multi-use spray. It's is also that the it spray is? that they spray to do the ten yards yes, they, for the <laughs> for the free kick. So it's a, that's the foam. It, it, yeah, that's, yeah, the, that's the foam, foam version. version. You know, but, 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 listen, yeah. Listening to this beautiful description, I've realised the answer to Rich's question about when football has made it, soccer has made it in this country, yes. is when the children of America are all walking around wearing Landon Donovan aftershave. Yeah. When we live in that America, yeah. when we live in that America, David, that's when we know we've made yeah. it. Well, you're, that's why you're trying. That's where you're going to be a citizen. You're going to be a full-fledged member. Yeah, if and you I will. wear LD10. <laughs> what is this uh, tour about? You're here in Los Angeles, and then uh, yeah. middle of June, St. Louis, Seattle, Portland, San Francisco, before oh, hitting the America. East Coast. What do you have? So what are you guys doing? The World Cup is a remarkable time, and it, for us, it gives us the spine of our memories. Whenever you name a year, I immediately default to the nearest World Cup and can remember Slumdog Millionaire style, just like the incredible <laughs> collective <laughs> memories, uh, mostly of English doom. So... All Amer non participation. America are not in this World Cup. And it's, uh, you know, the Landon Donovan memory against Algeria that you talk about, where thousands of bars erupted in just incredible joy around soccer. That's not going to, there won't be new American memories this World Cup. There will be next year when the US women win the World Cup. But what we wanted to do was to tour the country, bring Americans together around the delirious kind of narrative of the World Cup, city to city, starting in the great city of St. Louis, moving down the West Coast the East Coast and really just revel together in what we're about to see, which is, you know, the World Cup. It's the Simon Kuiper, the great soccer writer, once said, when two teams in the World Cup take the field, their nation's history take the field alongside of them. So there's some of that. And then there's just human drama. It's humanity. We're going to have we're going to watch shared humanity, heroes, villains, joy, failure, doom, national glory unfurl and we wanted to bring americans together city by city night by night and really just revel in every second yeah. so they, we're going to be watching the games during the day as we're traveling between the cities and then drinking. talking daytime there may be some daytime drinking rich yes. and then we're going to talk about the games at night and it is a, a it is a pan-american tour one of the problems that we've discovered about america and i've been here for 28 years i should really know better yes it's a really big country there are a lot of cities which means yes. you, you <laughs> say you're going on american tour it's pretty much impossible to go to to even scratch the surface of all the cities we yeah, want you've to got go to. brooklyn philly boston atlanta and dc and yeah. then your crackle partnership with embassy row yeah sony which, crackle 
Sony Crackle, Sony pardon Crackle. me. Sony Crackle. Sony Crackle. Uh, Embassy Row is uh, an organization with which I am personally familiar. Yes. Having uh, been friends and worked with you in various ways in over various the past couple of decades. Past, you present, have also, and future. through Embassy Row, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. created Good Morning Football, which yeah, is Good Morning a Football major on the NFL hit, Network. A major hit. Great. On the, the, the NFL Network. Those guys. So, what do you do? Like, so, I, you so, don't even so, finish this sentence. Well, no. Guys. So, Embassy Row is the production company. That's my day job. Um, the uh, <laughs> which is I probably should not mention daytime drinking around my day job. But uh, <laughs> Embassy Row running Embassy Row, the production company, is my day job. Embassy Row also produces Men in Blazers, produces lots of other shows in sports and entertainment. The great Andy Cohen show. I know Fantastic. you met Andy and uh, Super. great guy. Um, so um, we're doing. We a few years ago made previews for the World Cup when we were working with Grantland with uh, with Bill Simmons over there. We've made previews again for this World Cup. Uh, they're available on Sony Crackle. Mm -hmm. um, so go and check those out. They're going to be coming out uh, just a few days' time, I think. Okay. Fantastic. So you got that going on. Yep. What else do you guys Made those. have going on? Well, we got the tour. We got the book. TV show will be back. Liverpool um, and Real Madrid. And no, we've wanna, got a Champions wanna, League game this weekend. You want to break that down for me? Yeah, I Talking think... Talking some serious football? Here? Okay. Here's the thing. Two teams who are amazing on the counterattack. Liverpool... The third player we should really talk about in the world who really emerged this year, Mohamed Salah of <sighs> Liverpool, a fantastic Egyptian player, a player who's literally united the Middle East. Whether you're whatever, whatever flavor of Muslim you are, Shia, Sunni, whichever country you're from, you see the Mo Salah jersey all the way around the Arab world. He is beloved by, by uh, Muslims, beloved by Christians, beloved by sort of everybody. The most likable, lovely, fast, tiny uh, little footballer. He plays with such joy. He's going to be playing for Liverpool against Cristiano of Real Madrid. Two teams so powerful on the counterattack. It's, I think, going to be a cagey affair. Mm -hmm. We know how Americans love a low-scoring soccer game. <laughs> um, I don't think it's going to be a shootout. I think it's going to be a cagey <laughs> affair. Whoever scores first wins. That's my prediction. Roger? I think it's going to be an, it'd be like American League Baseball at its DH kind of peak as well. It's just look like at a, you talking our like language here. Look at you. He's like, becoming a citizen. About, look, you, He's you, becoming just, a citizen. I've taken my citizenship Will you stop doing The first that? question is, what is a DH? I'm, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a huge, I'm a huge White Sox fan. Chess, we're chewing tobacco. Baseball, we absolutely adore you. <laughs> Uh, it'll be it will be a high scoring affair. Both teams love to attack. Uh -huh. Neither can really defend with any true confidence. It's going to be a psychological battle. Liverpool, uh, not unlike the, mm -hmm. uh, the 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 Vegas Golden Knights, no one expected them to be in the final. Yeah. They are there. They play this buccaneering brand of football. Um, I'm from the city of Liverpool. There's two teams: Liverpool, like the Yankees, Everton. The Mets, unfortunately. I'm an Evertonian, mm. but even I can't begrudge their success. Run by this German who's like a Teutonic Jim Harbour, a guy called Jurgen Klopp, an incredible <laughs> motivational German. Yeah. Um, and it will be a joy to watch this game tomorrow. To, if they if they succeed, they are if you like happiness, if you like joy, if you like human wonder, watch this team and this little Mo Salah who's like a tiny little Ewok. Tiny little yeah, care bear. He, he also has the, the assassination <laughs> abilities of like a Westworld host yeah. infused in one little human being. Watch yeah. him, savor, love it, America. We, we should just, you shouldn't even have wow. to take the test to become an American with all those pop culture references you yeah. just made to try and, to try and draw understandable references Rich to Eisen. the American audience. This, but, this Roger. Is this is, but the truth is, this is that this is honestly, we're both massive American sports fans. Yes. We've been here a long time. When we came here, the internet didn't exist. Soccer didn't exist. I mean, don't even start me on the 1989-1990 Orlando Magic starting lineup. Like, I could go on for ages about, I was like, I, I lived every single game of that season. And you grew up in Liverpool in the 1980s. You watched The Love Boat. You watch Heart to Heart. You watch Fantasy <laughs> Island. And you say, life can be lived in colour. I want to go there. Because we want to leave you uh, in a better way mm -hmm. uh, than we found you. We were going to play start bench cut. But Chris, okay. do you want to, you, you pulled up some some. I have uh, a practice uh, test for your citizenship. Oh, uh, would you like to? Uh, want come some, on. You yeah, ready, Roger? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I hope the INS, INS are watching. Yeah. I'm nervous uh, again. When must all men register for the selective service? I'm, uh, I'm ready to fight now. <laughs> Is that the right answer? Uh, the correct answer at age. Bar mitzvah. At age 18. 18. Bar mitzvah I'm, age. Not, I'm not even becoming a citizen. I know the answer to that. Yeah, next question. In what month do we vote for president? November. November. November, correct. Mm -hmm. The Federalist Papers supported the passage of the U.S. Constitution. Name one of the writers. James Madison. Correct. <sighs> 
Well, you've seen Hamilton, right? My degree's in American history. The House of Representatives has how many voting members? Oh, that's good. Not enough. <laughs> 435, that's basically correct. Who is the governor of your state right now? Oh, uh, Cuomo. Pataki. <laughs> you are stuck in the past. Pataki. 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 Well, yeah. Roger, it's been nice knowing you here yeah. in America. Oh, yeah. uh, we, we hope you are still around so you can go to St. Louis on June yeah. 14th oh, to please, kick off your tour. Yeah. Ask us anything about the Rockford Files. Uh, what was the name of his best friend? I can't remember. Angel. A long time ago. Angel. The, okay, I'm I, done. The, the, what was the dog in Heart to Heart, Rich? The dog? Yeah. In Heart to Heart. All I know is Mrs. Heart was yeah, gorgeous. Yeah, just, She's freeway. gorgeous. When they met, it was freeway. Moida. Freeway. Freeway. Was freeway. You're right. right. You're right. Freeway was the freeway. Was All right, you can stay. Okay. You can stay. That, freeway was, was the that dog. That was on my test. What was Max? Max was another Max dog. Max was just the butler. <laughs> my name's Max, and I You're take care of the butler. Freeway was the dog. Which easy, because when they met, it was Moida. Moida. America. I love watching you guys, and I can't wait to read your encyclopedia, Blazer Tannica. Uh, uh, at Roger Bennett, at Embassy Davies on Twitter for each, at Men and Blazers as well. Uh, go check out Encyclopedia, Encyclopedia Blazer Tannic. It's Easy beautiful, for me to say. and I hate everything that we do, but even I love this <laughs> Come back anytime, gentlemen. Love it. You got it. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.